Hey guys, welcome to seven drum editing tips in seven days. Now this first little mini lesson is going to be about how to cure the messy symbols that you often get when quantizing a bad drum recording. So sometimes you get a drum recording that's that out of time that when you're moving the kick and snare, um, you have to move them a fair bit. And while the cymbals are sustaining in the background, you're also messing with the cymbal sound and you often do get this stutter effect or this phasey-ish sound and they don't sustain or they don't ring out properly. And that causes an unnatural, horrible sound. And uh, a lot of people do try to get around this by time stretching audio. In my personal opinion, this doesn't work. The individual tracks start to drop out of phase at this point and the tones of your drums actually um, change at this point because you're stretching the audio. And in my opinion, this should never be done. You shouldn't have to time stretch audio. And even if you do, it should be a very, very, very small amount. And in my opinion as well, the last thing that you should possibly do, the worst case scenario. But this little trick I've started doing, and I don't even know how I thought about doing this. I don't know how many other people do this. I don't know if this concept would be frowned upon by other people. Um, but I just wanted to introduce you to what I do to get around this. And I think it might help a lot of people out there because it's personally helped me a lot um, in getting around this horrible sound without having to time stretch audio. So what you're looking at here is a tiny two bar section of a recording that I, uh, that I worked on not so long ago. The kick was tracked separately on a pad, so we thankfully don't have the kick to worry about. Uh, but in this particular case, the drummer could not play to a click. So even these snares um, and overheads, what you're looking at right now, are pretty far out of time. And as you're dragging these in time and you're dragging the wave files over to cover the gaps, you're getting the stutter effect and it's very off-putting. So I'm going to just eyeball this now. I'm going to quickly um, go over this, put these roughly in time, and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by the stuttering effect. So like I said, I'm just roughly eyeballing this. I am doing this example in Logic, but this can be done in any DAW. It doesn't matter what you're in. And um, this session was originally in Pro Tools. So you can see with this last hit here, which is where the problem is in this example, you've got this massive gap here. And to cover that gap, we're gonna to have to drag this audio over it. And what you're doing there is you're repeating the end of this section again, just to cover the gap. And that's what causes that stutter effect, which you'll be able to hear now. So you can hear that. That horrible sort of stuttering effect you get we want to get rid of that. So what most people would do would be they'd highlight these here and they'd time stretch this over like this. But you can hear that snare changes tone very easily. You can hear it's lower now and that is very easy to tell um, and it's going to ruin your recordings if you're doing that constantly um, to cover up these gaps. So what I discovered is that if you actually cut this audio here before the stutter effect, somewhere in the middle, and then you drag it about halfway between the two. You're actually dispersing the repeated audio that was here over two different points, which means that instead of there being a lot of repeated audio here, there's less, but there's also a bit here. And because there's not as much, it's not audible. You can't hear that stutter effect because you can usually get away with a little bit of repeated audio, especially with your cymbals. But when there's that bit too much, that's where you start hearing weird things. And because now we've basically cut that in half, kept half there and put half there, then now you should no longer be able to hear that stutter effect. And there you go. 
it's completely done and that's just from cutting the audio here dragging it over a little bit joining it together and that disperses that stir effect over two points which means that it's less obvious and you can no longer hear it now if the gap is big enough you can often get away with cutting it multiple times so if you you cut it once you drag it over and it still doesn't cure it this is quite a big gap here so i could perhaps if that still didn't cure it i could cut it once about here drag that over and cut it again about here drag that over and you'll be able to hear still again completely gone so i don't know whether this would be frowned upon um in theory it shouldn't work in theory it should sound wrong but it doesn't and i now use this all the time to get around this problem of having this stutter effect in your symbols without having to time stretch anything so i hope you found this helpful it'd be interesting to know your own way of doing this um and if you've even tried this method before like i said i, I don't know if this is right or wrong in theory um, you know how some audio engineers are online, they're so you right or wrong, there's no way unless it's their way. But personally, I find this really helpful and I think a lot of people would find this helpful as well. So please subscribe, drop me a comment below, tell me what you think, tell me if you've done this, tell me your own ways of getting around these problems.